My name is Béla Lipták. I'm an engineering consultant. I specialize on energy conservation and safety related topics. And I'm going to talk about the reversible fuel cell, uh, RFC, which I'm hopeful will be as familiar by the end of the century as the PC is today, although my wife tells me that I'm too much of an optimist. Uh, we do have fuel cells which use hydrogen to make electricity. And we do have electrolyzers that use electricity to make hydrogen. But both of these pieces of equipment are large and expensive and have absolutely no reason to be separated. So what you see on, on this slide is a combination of these two devices. This RFC operates during the day when the sun is out to make hydrogen and during the night when we need electricity, make electricity from that hydrogen. If you want to study the details of this slide, which is uh, somewhat complicated, the blue flow direction describes the electrolyzer phase in other words, during the day, and the uh, red flow direction describes what happens during the night, the fuel cell condition. And uh, you can see from the slide that this is a pretty complex uh, system, particularly the switching over from one to the other mode of operation. And I want to make it as simple as a thermostat is today. In other words, the homeowner must not be faced with either excessive complexity, and I, by the way, hate those digital devices today where I have to remember a million things in order to use it. Uh, and uh, it also has to be small and inexpensive. So there are all kinds of challenges. One is to come up with a control package on a chip that uh, performs the control functions. And I'm glad to say that uh, I visited India, held uh, 11 lectures in uh, seven cities, and uh, the largest university there, VIT, uh, agreed to start working on the development of this software. The other challenge is to come up with a catalyst that uh, is capable of converting uh, water into hydrogen in one direction and uh, hydrogen into water in the other direction. A catalyst that is inexpensive, that is widely available, and I hope it will be something as simple as carbon, maybe a nano version, the hair surface. And uh, the third uh, need, of course, is the mechanical design. So this right now is a concept and uh, needs a lot of, lot of development. Solving the energy needs of housing requires the uh, RFC. But solving the energy needs of industry, of transportation, requires large quantities of liquid hydrogen. And so on this slide, I show a design 
which you cannot read because the design itself is very large. It's a full dot in my book. But it's a design to be built in the Sahara. A 1,000 megawatt power plant for generating hydrogen from solar energy. Basically, you might look at it as a giant electrolyzer. It requires uh, a deep sea port so that just as liquefied natural gas can, can be shipped by tankers, uh, liquefied hydrogen shipment also requires that. I've also uh, reviewed the ground conditions because deep in the Sahara, where the sand moves, the construction would be difficult. But in other areas, particularly where the olive trees uh, grow, uh, the ground is very solid. And we can actually place the solar collectors between the olive trees. So we would not even interfere with agriculture. Actually, we would help it because by shadowing the ground, evaporation would be reduced and might even do some good. But basically, what you see on this slide is a design for a demonstration plant, a full-sized one. The lobbyists of the fossil energy and the nuclear energy uh, industries or their financial people will never be convinced that this is feasible or this is competitive financially until it is built. So uh, what I feel strongly about is that we should spend the money on at least one to show that it works and to end this debate. About six square miles area is needed to build a 1,000 megawatt power plant, which is about the same in size as a nuclear power plant. It's, it's a full-size power plant. According to my calculations, it generates between 100 and 200,000 uh, tons of liquid hydrogen, which would then be uh, transported to where energy is needed by very similar tankers as uh, liquid natural gas is today and would be distributed further by trucks. On this last slide, I made a few notes about other aspects, such as, for example, the cost of energy wars. Yes, right now we are in the face of history where we are fighting over scraping the bottom of the barrel or spending remarkable amounts, not only of money, but environmental resources, digging for sand in Alaska and uh, drilling in the bottom of the oceans and what have you. Uh, to give you a sense of, of numbers, the military expenditure today, yearly, is $0.7 trillion. That is the same amount we spend on social security. We spend $0.4 trillion on oil imports. The total American GDP is $15 trillion. The total government budget is between 3 and $4 trillion. So these are large numbers. Now, if we convert this technology to what I'm talking about, we end global warming, we end the nuclear risk, uh, 
oil spills, mining accidents, and so on. I visualize by the end of the century, most of our activity will be wireless and fully distributed to meet the total energy needs of all mankind requires, according to my calculations, about 6% of the area of the Sahara. The cost, I estimated, is about 1% of the GDP of the planet. And uh, lastly, I would mention that just as rebuilding of Europe at the end of the Second War uh, by the Marshall Plan created tremendous number of jobs and an economic boom, so would the building of the infrastructure for this new uh, energy technology, which is unavoidable, create an economic boom and uh, would eliminate the present depression.